Hello, welcome to Sailing Kate Yoes. I'm down at Brooklyn and uh, Chris has just taken delivery of his new Bay Raider 17 that was built by Denver Marine in Tasmania. So he towed it up from Geelong a couple of days ago and uh, this is his first sail up here. Hello! It's a very nice cover. It's a lovely cover. Custom made, custom fit, fits like a glove. Yeah. It travels really well with it, covers the hull. This will be the first time with a cover off. I have had a little bit of it off to get some gear into it, but not fully off. So it's a bit of an experiment oh. here. We'll so, so is work it, out how to get to it. Is it like that Christmas new present sort of feeling? Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'll pick this thing up. So this has got reinforced patches on the back of the canvas cover so it doesn't wear out from the inside on uh, friction with anything. Yeah, it's pretty good, cool, isn't it? Oh, a lot of great attention to detail. Yeah. The hull's been spray painted and it looks absolutely amazing. It even has bubble wrap. That shows you how new it is. The Bay Raider 17 is a Swallow Yachts design. It's 17 feet, has a 5 foot 11 beam, draws only 8 inches when the centre board's up and 4 foot 11 when the centre board's down. The timber trim is all celery top and looks stunning. There are two rig options. You can either have a gunter rig like Chris's which allows for a shorter main mast which gives less overhang when trailering or the longer mast with a Bermudan rig. Still worried about your dental plan. Okay, so that goes there. And this is the self-tacking jib. The way this works is that you get this fairly tight now so that it's about right. And you've got a bit of tension here. And then what happens is when you actually unfurl the head saw, which we'll do for an example now. Yeah. And when I tension this like that. Oh, that gives it a bit more. That leave, that basically pulls this down and increases the tension on the, on the shrouds. Is that a self-tacking normal thing or is this something this, that's this, close this is, to this design? This was apparently an old Herreshoff, I think he said. Like an old Herreshoff type Set invention. Up. Ah. Similarly, it's really, it's very finely balanced. So the mizzen just slots in and then it's lashed in place so it doesn't come out. Yep, very simple. And Marlu is Chris's sister. Yeah, it was Mary Lou's nickname. Marlu. Dynema stays. Yeah. That's the boom. Chris, are you ready to christen this baby? We are ready to christen the boat, Malu. I we don't know how easy or hard it is to get it off. Uh, should have been two wheat bricks this morning, not one. Are you worried it's going to take off? Yeah, I don't know. Having not done it before. The Bay Raider is also a catch, meaning the mizzen mast is in front of the rudder. And there's an outboard well with custom made flaps that maintain the whole shape when the outboard's up. It's quite an idyllic spot down here at Brooklyn, but it is the route that the main cargo trains take to go north and south on the east coast of Australia. Uh, to cross over the uh, Hawkesbury River, they have to come through here. Uh, very loud. It's very hot today, meant to be high 30s. There's a fold-out bimini which offers protection from the weather while sailing and camping. 
and you have a choice of timber mast and spars or carbon fibre. 220 litres of water provide ballast which can be pumped out. Well it's a bit frustrating. I've got everything pulled out and uh, we may be doing one knot, one and a half maybe. Uh, it's meant to be a lot stronger than this but you know it is what it is as they say. Well, finally, we've got a bit of wind. Because uh, I think I was roasting here. So that's Brooklyn down there. Probably taken us at least an hour to get just here. Very little wind, but it has sort of a little bit, it's picked up a little bit, maybe two or three knots now. We're probably going to go to Fisherman's Beach and have a swim because it's very hot. That was a nice lunch stop there at Fisherman's Beach, uh, pretty much opposite uh, America's and Refuge Bay, if you're up this way, or Cowan Creek. And a goanna, that goanna went for me, I've never seen that before. Normally you can get quite close to them and they just walk away in the opposite direction, you know. This, this one turned and actually went for me and I had to kick sand in his face. You don't want to get bitten by goannas because they uh, eat carrion and dead animals and uh, they have a lot of bad bacteria in their mouths. So if you ever get bitten by one, that's not a good thing. They can get aggressive. It's like all things in Australia. They can get aggressive. So the wind's picked up a little bit. It's probably five knots now. Um, but it's a nice gentle sail. Very nice. It's a bit cooler because of the wind. So it, was, it was 38 degrees before lunch, uh, which is pretty hot. Another busy day on the water. It's still summer. Coming up towards Batonga. It's a decent swell out here, probably almost up to a metre. You often get that through here, it's 
quite shallow behind Lion Island and uh, the entrance to pit water. It's always quite a bit of swell. Should be a good test for Chris with his water ballast. So it's about four o'clock. We've decided to turn and head back. Uh, we're gonna try and get down to Jerusalem Bay, which is quite a long way down. Uh, and tomorrow we might not be able to get out because there might be a lot of wind, but uh, Chris assures me he will tow me if, um, if it all goes pear-shaped. So there you go. I probably do have enough charge on my electric outboard, but you know, you don't know. So uh, we're on the side of safety as always. definitely a bit iffy around here. There are a lot of thunderstorms around but they're uh, south of Sydney at the moment with lightning and rain. I don't think they're going to come this far up. They'll probably blow out before they get here. Um, but you can see the lightning. It's, uh, it's just a little bit interesting because I saw a YouTube video the other day of a yacht and I think it was actually on Sydney Harbour. It was on a mooring and it got struck by lightning straight down the mast. Uh, yeah. And we've got a bit of rain happening now. Just going past where the moorings are in Jerusalem Bay. There's only, I think, three in there. Very crowded normally in summer. The wind's been kind to us and blowing me in. So this is the end of Jerusalem Bay and the tide's out so uh, so we're going to tuck in over here somewhere because we're still in the sun and it is very hot. So it's about 6.30. We've just found a spot to drop anchor tonight which is just back a bit from the end. Um, there were only three moorings around the side and two of those were taken. We've picked this spot. It's very deep. It's probably, oh, I don't know, at least 10 metres deep. Um, but I think there is sand just around the edges, but hopefully we won't get too close to the rocks so we won't need to find out. You can hear the, the train line from here, it's way over there, way at the top, but apart from that it's alright. We had a good sail today, went all the way up to Pitonga, good, good breeze this afternoon getting all the way up there and then coming all the way back. We had the uh, shower of rain, it lasted 10 minutes or something. Uh, but yeah, all in all, it's a very good day. Now I'm just having a, um, a cleansing drink after a long day. Tonight, for something completely different, it's not. It's going to be another one of those Heinz uh, sachets of pasta. This time it's ravioli and I'm going to add some spinach and mushrooms because it's quick and it's easy and it tastes good, so why not? I'm not sure whether you heard that viewers, but he's having steamed rice with a bolognese sauce and mushrooms and something else. Carrots. Carrots, yes. Sounds very good. It's about, I don't know, nearly eight o'clock now. It's beginning to get dark. Yeah. Yeah, he's lost his head torch, but you know, life carries on. Uh, uh, yeah, anyway, I'm going to have my dinner now because it's heated up and uh, looks pretty good. I don't know if you could hear that. I thought, oh, that's really weird. 
it's raining and yet it's not raining because you could hear <laughs> you could hear what sounded like rain and uh, there's no rain and it was the whole school of little bait fish um, swimming around on the surface just flicking the water around and it sounded like rain so I had a pretty good night last night you can hear the traffic from the motorway up there which is a bit annoying but um, yeah very peaceful apart from that down here be fantastic in winter down here and the southerly came as a sort of gust of wind maybe 11 o'clock it wasn't very strong at all anyway get us some coffee some breakfast and then we'll think about what we're going to do for the rest of the day well, we're just heading out uh, it's only meant to be like two or three knots of wind this morning till till lunchtime and we'll probably uh, get back to the ramp around lunchtime Yeah. Well, it's about 11 o'clock now, and the wind has come up at last. It's only three knots, maybe four, but at least we can sail. We had to motor for a bit just to get out of Jerusalem Bay because there's nothing really down there. Very pleasant being on the water. catching me up but I'm sure he can point about at least five degrees higher than I can so uh, it's inevitable he's going to catch me in the end and it's a faster boat with a gun to rig and so uh, the sun's come out now so it's not too bad it's no, nowhere near as hot as yesterday so thanks again for watching Sailing Kate Louise and Chris's maiden voyage on his Bay Raider 17 made by Demma Marine down in Tasmania. Uh, they're a swallow yacht, an English design. Quite a few of them in England, not many in Australia. It's time for more viewer photos. If you've got a photo of your boat, send it to me at sailingkatelouise at gmail.com. So thanks for watching Sailing Kate Louise and I'll see you on the water somewhere next time. <laughs>